train has left the station and no one can stop it. And it looks like that and I believe that we are getting close to the last days of possible rethinking and reconsidering of everything that is happening in Ukraine. If those big powers don't do anything in a short period of time, yes, I'm pretty much certain that we'll face a real disaster. If you bet on a fact that someone is bluffing, it means that you have no better cards. But you just believe that the other side has weaker cards. And you're not sure about it because you don't know and you didn't see his or their cards. But everybody is speaking only about war. Nobody wants to reach the peace. Nobody speaks about peace. Peace is almost a forbidden word. And please notice this. Because they say we need to win in order to secure future peace. But nobody is speaking about a peace. And then, okay, you negotiate it. But you have the other side. You have to have the other side on the table as well. It's, uh, you know, it's uh, very strange to me that no one is actually attempting to stop the war. There is another theory which I can understand, which I don't say that I do approve, but I understand that West thinks that they can win easily against Putin. They want to exhaust him in Ukraine and then they will enter the space and then uh, Russia in today's territory and uh, shaped like it is today won't exist anymore and uh, Putin will be uh, overthrown and uh, everything else. Yeah, maybe that's possible, but... Do you think that is possible? Is it possible to use I Ukraine don't, I to don't weaken Russia? Uh, well, it weakened Russia anyway. But uh, is it enough to destroy Russia and to overthrow Putin? I don't believe so. In today's Europe, they all act like big heroes. But they did not say to their people that they will pay a very big price. And uh, speaking about it, you and all these leaders should do absolutely everything in order to stop any kind of warmongering behavior and everything. Why I'm speaking that we are getting close to the precipice, to the abyss. Analyze the situation of NATO and the United States. They cannot afford themselves uh, losing war in Ukraine, which means Russia cannot win. Because First of all, their political legacy will not exist or it will be so poor that they cannot allow themselves. Number two, uh, position of Europe and the West, collective West, in geopolitical terms, will deteriorate so much that no one would be able to revive it and to renew it. And number three, it will open Pandora's box for more movements at least and hostilities against collective West in the future. But take the other side. That's a nice story for one side. But take the other side. If Putin loses the war, Russia will not exist and won't be shaped like it is today. And then when you have these two sides so much far from each other, with their wishes, with their expectations, then you see that everything is at stake. Everything. No one can afford to himself or to itself, to themselves, to lose. When you have this situation, that's why I was saying to you, that's why I was saying publicly and not hiding it, that we are getting closer to a real disaster. Who is ready to lose 1 million, 2 million, 5 million, 10 and 15 million people? Ask yourself. I'm not ready to lose a single man. 
and we won't participate in that. But it's a question for some other people. How close are we now to a third world war, a confrontation? I, see that. I cannot say a third world war, but a big confrontation, how far we are. I believe that we are not far away from it. Not more than, not more than three, four months. And there, is a, and there is a danger to happen even before that. Where do you stand in this whole insanity? Where does Serbia stand in this we'll big keep, conflict? We'll keep peace, stability and tranquility within the region and in our country.